in here, I have something very exciting, but I'll get to that in just a minute. Right now, we need to talk about fuel tanks. Fuel tanks or fuel tank on the jet powered skateboard project. I think in the last video I started talking about, you know, how I'm gonna put the fuel tank on the back of the skateboard along with the jet engine. I've been thinking about the fuel tank thing a lot in the last day or so, and you know what? It is tougher than I realize. And here's why. The jet engine goes through a monster amount of fuel. It's something like a liter every five minutes. It's, it's a lot. If I want to go for a five minute run down the road and five minutes back up, and we do the complicated maths for that, two liters. Now carrying two liters on the skateboard, it is a big deal. In fact, I'm gonna prove to you that it's a big deal. So let's say the jet engine is gonna sit here. Doesn't matter if it's forward or backwards or up or down, it's, it's roughly here. This is a liter and this is a liter. I'm only gonna get five minutes if I have one of these. I really need the equivalent of two of these. That's a lot, like, I'm not gonna put big round cylinders on, I don't think, but I'm trying to figure out, like, I wanted to have, I want to have fuel tanks perhaps, you know, like down here or something like that, but you know, I, I, I really don't know, like I really have to, to think how it's gonna go. Maybe, maybe I need to raise the jet engine like this and have two cylindrical tanks or something like that. But it just looks so big, it kinda looks a bit not so good now. Another option would be to have custom, tr perhaps triangular tanks down here. Let me explain on the board. Let's say this is a wheel, and this is a wheel. These are the, this is the trucks going up here. That's the board. So let's say the jet engine is here. I could have a triangular fuel tank, something like that, one there, and one there. You know, I think that would look, you could have square, like that. Probably won't look so good. Truthfully, I'm not quite sure how triangular tanks would work. I think it would look okay. I'm just kind of looking at it just now and trying to gauge like how would they look, like how big would they need to be because I really do need to hold two liters. Like I don't think going, you know, I don't think a liter. You've got five minutes running and that's it. You have to like go and fill it up again. There are a few other options though. One option was something somebody suggested in the comments and honestly it was something I've considered. I've considered pretty much everything I think but open to suggestions a long fuel tank underneath the board like this personally I'm not sure about that there's something about that I don't like I like it to be on the end just here and everything else is just skateboard I might have to do the fuel tank under the whole length but I'm trying not to the other option which I definitely never thought of and I wrote it off right away as something I wouldn't do put a fuel tank on my back and have the the, the fuel pipe going down to the jet engine. Too messy, I, I don't do messy, complicated, no. It has to be simple, clean cut, minimalist, and completely in line with my OCD behaviors. There is one more idea that is currently in the running. It's fantastically complex, sort of, but it could be so good, it's ridiculous. Kind of hard to explain. I think I might be able to explain with some clay and a battery.
fingers crossed this explanation works out and you understand what I mean. So if we have the jet engine on the skateboard like this, let's pretend there's a box around the jet engine and it would go from down to this corner at the back, up here, up to the front here, across here, along and down. So basically around the perimeter of the turbine. Now hold that thought in your head right now and pretend that this is the equivalent. So this is that box. So the turbine would be this battery and we'll squish it into the clay. It's not pretty, but you should get the idea. So this would be the jet engine. So if we remove this, take that away, that would be the fuel tank. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, how can you make a fuel tank, that custom kind of shape, all molded perfectly around the jet engine? I have the same question as well. I have no idea, but I'm sure something could be 3D printed, I think. Or if not 3D printed, like I've got a 3D printer, but there's no way it's good enough to print something like that. It would, it would just look horrendous. But maybe I could 3D print something that could act as a mold and I could fiberglass it, put plastic around it. I don't know, I'm just... The reason this is so good, the number one reason, is you use up every little space. Nothing gets wasted. So you don't have two big lumbering cylinders. You have a perfectly formed fuel tank that is basically molded around the size and shape of the jet engine. Now truthfully I don't know if that's going to work, if it's going to be feasible. It could just be so much work and so much hassle, although that's never stopped me before. It just might not be worth it. In saying that, I also like the triangle idea that I talked about earlier. The triangle idea could work because we can make it out of aluminium, I can get a company to weld it up, and I can sort of sand it and polish it and make it look all nice and fancy. This stuff here is the other big problem. This isn't an insignificant amount of wiring and cables, it's very unwieldy. This jet engine is designed to go in like a model jet. So, you know, you spread things out. The batteries might be at the front or the back. The fuel tank might be at the front or the back. The jet will be at the back, you know, that kind of thing. You know, I don't think I need these long cables. I think I can somewhat customize these, shorten them down. So I might be able to get the smaller, but it's still a bunch of stuff. So let's say I have a fuel tank on the left of the engine and a fuel tank on the right of the engine. I still need to find somewhere to put the electronics. are various widths of square grade 5 titanium bar. This one here is 20 millimeters diameter. This one here, can't remember. And this one here, can't remember. You would think for the amount of this stuff cost, I'd remember what I actually bought. Nope. Now this titanium has arrived just in time because, as you probably know, I'm at the stage where I'm starting to mount the jet engine on the skateboard. And I'm pretty sure I need this bar to do it. I don't think I can do it without it. Maybe we'll see. So it's likely that this bar will maybe attach to the trucks and then some titanium sheet or plate will come up to the jet engine or maybe the plate will go on here and then this stuff might come up to the jet engine. It's still a work in progress. I'm still figuring it out. It's not easy. Like, here's the thing. If I've learned one thing in the last few years of designing various titanium stuff, pens, Mechanical pencils, tweezers, carabiners, bottle openers, etc, etc, etc. And that's that usually it takes a while, it takes a lot of thinking to come up with a simple and elegant solution to something. It needs to look good, it needs to function, it needs to... I've never been able to get to a simple design with a first attempt. It takes a lot of thinking. Most of your time is spent eliminating possibilities. And so that's why things take so long. I'm, I mean, I could just go, let's mount this onto there today, but there's a good chance it won't be simple. It certainly will not be elegant. It's unlikely to look good. What I do, almost always, is spend 99% of my time playing with the design and options in my head. You know, whether I'm going for a walk, whether I'm driving, whether I'm trying to get to sleep at night. I'm usually 
trying to figure out solutions and almost all of them are just like, well that won't work, that won't work, that won't work. Just getting rid of all the bad, obvious ideas. Yes, it may take a long time, but that's okay. I'm either gonna take a long time and do it properly and elegantly, or I'm not gonna do it at all. So far this project has been pretty easy because I've just been trying to get one thing going and that is the jet engine. However, it's becoming exponentially more tricky. And here's why. Skateboard, jet engine, wiring, fuel tanks. A day or two ago, I was at the stage of going, right, let's get this jet engine mounted onto the skateboard. But the more I think about it, and the more I sort of eliminate possible solutions and, and try and figure out how I'm gonna do it, I realized I need to carry a lot of fuel. I'm not quite sure how to do that. Because the fuel tank or fuel tanks need to be a certain size, that's gonna affect how the engine gets mounted. And because I'm taking up so much space storing fuel, where do I put all the wiring? So suddenly it's gone from a, let's mount the jet engine on the skateboard, to how do we get all these pieces to play nicely together? When I was talking earlier about how I design things and how you know most of my time is spent playing around with the idea in my head, coming up with creative solutions and possibilities and, and basically, writing off 99% of those at least, you know, before moving forward and how long it takes. It reminds me of a quote by Albert Einstein and he said, it's not that I'm so smart, it's just that I stay with problems longer. 